A very good morning to every viewer who, have, uh, who has joined us uh, here on Times Network. My name is Feston Maregezo and uh, we are here again with another exciting discussion where we want to talk about issues uh, surrounding taxes in the country. And we know our mother is a Marawi Revenue Authority and uh, we are glad that today we are also joined by another senior manager at Marawi Revenue Authority and uh, we are talking about the Corporate Affairs Division. She is Wilma Chalulu, a very uh, familiar name. Uh, those who have been following issues to do with taxes, Malawi Revenue Authority, it's not a new name. So that's my guest today. Please keep me company. So Wilma, uh, uh, welcome to the segment. Thank you. So today we just wanted to talk about two issues. Uh, the first one is um, the block management system which was introduced some two years ago, if not three years ago, uh, where you, among others, want to segment taxpayers. You know, there are some people who are supposed to pay tax, but they didn't know that they have to pay tax and uh, how much they have to pay, where, and at what time. Uh, that's why maybe you introduced this system. I, I just wanted to know, how has been the journey? Uh, how are people receiving this system? How is it working? Uh, thank you very much. Yes, it's true. We in, MRA introduced a uh, block management system about two or three years or so. Yeah. And uh, the reason why it was introduced, we all know, because we there are a lot of th a lot of people doing businesses out there. Yes. But it was rather difficult to bring them into the tax net. Um, uh, you know, the block management system was introduced because there was an issue that there 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 are a lot of businesses out there that okay. were not coming forth to pay their taxes. So in so doing, after doing some research, there was a research that was conducted that saw that there were, there were lots of businesses out there that are not paying taxes, small and medium enterprises. So in order to reach out to them, there are two issues. You know, uh, either businesses don't comply because they don't want to, basically they're those that don't want to, okay. but then some don't just don't have the, the right information, they just don't know. And so MRA, uh, we, uh, after the research and after also learning from other tax administrations around, we introduced the block management system. So the block management system, about two years ago, has, has demarcated different sections of, of, of the cities, okay. uh, Blanta, Lilongwe, Mzuzu. Um, so in there, they have, we, have, we have got tailor-made uh, solutions okay. for our taxpayers. Our officers are able to demarcate and see the different bu businesses that are operating in, in the different blocks. And in so doing, now they're able to share information with them, to learn what their businesses are, and tell them the information that they need to know uh, in order for them to, 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 to comply. So ever since the block management system was introduced as MRA, we have been able to reach out to the businesses, interact with them, and, and they have also been able to come to MRA to get more information. And also another issue, what we've, uh, an, an, another service that we've introduced are called our, cl our client service officers mm -hmm. that are able now to visit the, the, visit the uh, taxpayers or the businesses on a regular basis um, and uh, again and to understand the issues that they have. So the, it, it, what's, what's happening now is that now people are understanding um, what, what taxes are all about and it's easier for them now to, com to comply. Okay, so uh, we are coming at a background whereby um, you did uh, through uh, another organization, Adolf Film Corp, yes. uh, where you established that in Malawi we have uh, approximately uh, 1.6 million MSMEs and then at that time, we were talking of uh, 27,000 plus people who were, or businesses who were paying taxes duly. Now, moving, moving uh, fast forward to 2023, we are talking about 33,000 thereabouts that have started uh, paying taxes, or we are talking of a 2% jump from where we were to, to now. Is uh, the 2% impressive to say, yeah, I think we rolled out this system and then we have uh, added to the net some 2% more people. Is this something impressive? What are the bottlenecks so or what are the highlights? Okay, you must understand when we introduced the, when the block management uh, uh, initiative was launched or the concept, there were also some, the processes that we needed to go through to, to implement uh, the, the, the initiative. First of all, we needed to set up the uh, the, the offices, Blanta, Lilonga, and Zuzu. 
So when it was uh, when the concept was announced, it was not rolled out uh, immediately. Okay. And so over the two years, there has been a, a process of setting up offices, maybe in Planta, then Lilongwe, then in Zuzu. So. Uh, as we as we speak now, the the fruits of the block management system are are still in progress, and uh, we are very uh, very positive that uh, going forward with the setup with the, the system now being set up, uh, Blanta Lirongonzuzu, and then we're also rolling out to other we we'll roll out to other towns. Um, we believe that we will now will reap the the benefits once the system has been set up. So what do you say of uh, the understanding from the general populace of uh, the taxes that they, they are supposed to pay? I'm um, talking about the present, presumptive taxes and what have you. What's the general outlook out there? No, um, the general outlook out there is positive. Uh, and I think we, w what we can say is that we, we have received some positive feedback from the taxpayers, as I've said. We have, okay. we, we've seen our taxpayers now coming forward to understand. And now you talk about the presumptive tax, that's a, that's a tax that's been introduced for the small and medium enterprises. Yes, 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 yes. Um, those are some of the challenges that we, we, we learn from interacting with the businesses. Most of the businesses are, are probably do not do have the capacity maybe to, to be able to do uh, book accounting or maybe to hire uh, some accountants to do their books, to be able to read what their business is doing. So presumptive tax is uh, going to... Uh, has assisted the small and medium businesses to be able now to, to comply easily because they just pay the, the taxes based on their turnover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's another uh, issue that I wanted to uh, get more insights. You have mentioned something about turnover and then uh, we also hear that uh, uh, with the presumptive taxes, you correct me when I'm wrong, uh, you are you are kind of collecting some taxes from uh, from a turnover, not a profit. I just wanted to understand why not get it from a profit and not a turnover. Well, yes. Um, what's supposed to happen, indeed, is that you, we, uh, the, for the for the other for other businesses, camp or companies that are able to do to, to have the, the books that the, they have both bookkeeping, they've got proper accounts. It's easy to determine what their costs are, and then you can we, we tax uh, based on on their profits. Mm -hmm. But uh, with the small and medium businesses, sometimes they don't they don't have the know-how. Okay. They don't have to to be able to do to have bookkeeping, do their accounts properly, and that's one of the setbacks that has been um, with with the small businesses. So this presumptive tax will just it's, it's easier for them to determine how much they're making based on maybe what, on their daily sales and what have you. So they will, so from that, uh, MRA will just determine, will just make an assumption that based on this turnover, this is the profit that they may be able to make and make a calculation of on, on that, on okay. based on that. All right, so we also uh, heard about uh, the idea to introduce uh, what you're calling tax stamps. Yes. Maybe a bit of that. What was this specifically? Tax stamps are stamps that we put on items or products that are pay excise excise uh, tax. Okay. So, the products that are that attract excise uh, excise tax are those that we call maybe the the luxury the, the maybe luxury goods or okay. maybe they might be goods that are seen to be maybe somehow harmful. For example, um, beer, okay. uh, cigarettes, um, uh, some luxury luxury other luxury goods. Things that you can do without. Yes, things that you can do without. Yeah. So, uh, currently the currently that the excise stamps are on on cigarettes. Yeah. But that that portfolio now is going to be broadened to other products. Okay. So those products uh, include beverages like alcohol. Um, uh, there's also uh, uh, other drinks like uh, mahel. There's bottled water. So there's a whole range of products that this is uh, being uh, introduced to. The reason why um, the tax stamps are being introduced are several. Um, obviously, uh, one, um, uh, some of these uh, products that are coming in, that are going to have st stamps, are imported goods, for example, spirits, uh, imported spirits. Uh, we all know that maybe Malawi has been flooded with uh, all sorts of uh, alcoholic beverages yeah. so apart from ensuring that whoever is importing the, those products has paid their, their, their duty 
it's also a way of ensuring that maybe they, they're not counterfeit goods, that these are genuine goods, they've come into the country and wherever they're coming from, they, 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 it's genuine. So, uh, so excess times will also ensure that uh, what, in terms of production for uh, the, the local manufacturers, whatever is being produced uh, is, is what will confirm whatever they're producing on their pro production line. So it's a way, um, it's a way of in, in ensuring that all parties, whether those that are importing, are paying their fair share of, okay. uh, of excise as well. So talking Not about just that. smuggling. Okay. Uh, so who will be responsible in terms of uh, making sure that the products have, uh, or the products have the stamps? Is it the importer or the manufacturer? Let's say I'm importing from Zimbabwe. Do I have to engage the company in Zimbabwe to make sure that the products that are coming have to have those stamps? Or it will be me now uh, having the stamps at the borders when coming. What will be happening? Okay, there's, uh, there's an arrangement uh, with uh, MRA um, that uh, we, with, all, with all the local manufacturers or the importers, when you bring in your goods at the border, MRA will, will be res uh, responsible. You, you, you as an importer will mm -hmm. have to be responsible to ensure that the goods that you have brought in, your uh, MRA, you have, you have, you have, uh, you have uh, reported to MRA, and they will be the ones to, to, to put the cigarette stamp. Or okay. as when you pay when you pay your dues, MRA will pay for the will, will put the cigarette stamp on your products. Okay. Now to Malawian products. Now, uh, what will be happening uh, in this regard? Uh, do you have to go there sensitize them that they have to have the the stamps? Because I'm looking at a scenario whereby um, a company will declare that uh, it produces uh, a thousand products in a day. But, but essentially they do produce uh, 3,000 or plus. What would be the mechanism to make sure that uh, the stamps that are really on the bottles or on the packets are the ones that you are recording at your office? Okay, um, there, there, there's also going to be a system that MRA is going to introduce where with the manufacturers whereby we will, we will have uh, the capability to, uh, to, put, to, put, uh, to put some sort of monitor on the on the production line mm -hmm. that was that is going to be automated which MRA will also monitor in terms of uh, how what is going on the production line mm -hmm. so that way uh, the the M A MRA will um, will be able to read what's going on the production line okay. and interface with the that will interface with the with the manufacturers okay so for for a producer isn't this a cause for worry to say ah, more taxes what does it mean to the producer uh, no, it's not really because okay. What what's going to happen is that if you're talking about the investment into the 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 the, the tax stamps mm -hmm. of monitoring tool and the tax stamps uh, system itself, it's not uh, because uh, they, whether the, pro the the manufacturers are going to have this on their on their product line, what what's going to happen is that because this is going to be an allowable expense that okay. they can t that that that, uh, that that they can. They can, uh, they, 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 it will be allowed to be taken off at the, the, at the end of the year. Okay, so how soon are you uh, rolling out this uh, initiative? Have you already engaged all the stakeholders? At what stage are you with this? Uh, currently we are, we are engaging uh, the s stakeholders and we, we are envis envisaging that by April 2024 this should be now for fully operational. Mm -hmm. You tackled a bit of uh, smuggling. I, I don't know, uh, last time we, you were talking about drones, having drones in all the spots where you feel like there's a lot of smuggling happening. Uh, what's the status of that, that initiative and are there any other uh, initiatives that you're uh, introducing apart from the tax stamps and uh, what, are, what is it that you're doing? Um, yes, the drone project is still very much there. Um, in, in terms of uh, again the, the drone project, it, it's, it was a process. It was we are receiving funding from the World Bank, so it has been a, a, a process in terms of making sure that we have the capacity uh, for the, for the to, to, to to operate the drones. So right now we have got officers that have graduated in the operation of drones because this is a it's a highly specialized area. So MRA needed to make sure that they, the officers are ready for that. And then also, uh, in terms of ensuring that we, uh, we, we, the, the, the procurement process uh, is, is rolling, we have a donor, and they also have a way of uh, that they, they, they ensure that they have their procedures done. Mm -hmm. So that's also an advanced stage. 
And then also in terms of making sure that uh, drones can operate in the country, we also needed to make sure that we uh, there's, there's also procedures with the civil aviation. Mm -hmm. So all of that, uh, all those procedures are now at an advanced stage and uh, soon we should be able to see the, the, the drones uh, in operation maybe sometime next year. Uh, time is not our best ally. Wilma, thank you so much for your time uh, this morning. Thank you. Well, uh, dear viewer, that's how we end our discussion with uh, uh, Wilma Chalulu. Uh, she is from uh, the Corporate Affairs Division at uh, Malawi Revenue Authority. I've been first on Malegezo. Thanks for keeping in touch. Good morning.